our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. Let's pray together the prayer of the day. <laughs> God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue with our reading. According to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it, it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? Jesus answered, Every plant that my Heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said, explain this parable to us. Then Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, 
Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and she knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Not even the big dogs today. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One of the activities that I have confirmation students do during Lent is complete a 40-day Bible study based on the Gospel of Mark. After answering a series of questions, each day concludes with, are there any other things you have questions about from this reading? And most of the time, there is simply a blank space for them to write their queries, which is often left blank, except for day 33. When they read from the 14th chapter of Mark, when Jesus is arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, then I helpfully note in parentheses, if you don't mention the naked guy, I know you're not paying attention. Our gospel reading for today is also one where I want to throw in some parentheses for you. If the story about the Canaanite woman begging for mercy for her daughter doesn't make you really uncomfortable, you aren't paying attention. Because truthfully, Jesus' words and action when she comes to him begging to heal her daughter seem absolutely lousy and completely un-Jesus-like. You may also notice that there are some brackets in the listing for our Gospel reading. What is assigned for the Revised Common Lectionary this Sunday actually starts at verse 21, when Jesus goes to Tyre and Sidon. The other stuff that precedes it is the backstory and helps us gain a better understanding of what's going on. In the backstory, Jesus takes on religious leaders for adhering to rules and traditions rather than to adhering to the values of God's love and mercy. In Jesus' day, there was no understanding of germ theory, so their insistence upon washing hands had nothing to do with health, but was a ritual. It was a ritual to practice, and basically served as a separation tool between who's in and who's out who's acceptable, and who's not. Jesus points out that what we put into our mouth, referring to food and the food restrictions of the Jewish tradition, follow the trajectory of the food elimination process. This is perhaps the predecessor, predecessor of the popular children's book, Everybody Poops. What matters is not what and how we eat, but rather what we say and how we act. Charles Gary, in his, past, in his commentary on this passage, says that for Jesus, religious purity and faithful discipleship are not measured ultimately by how many perfect attendance badges one earns for Sunday school or worship, how often one had read the Bible from cover to cover, or how much money one contributes to the church treasury. Purity and faithfulness are shown ultimately by how the church speaks and lives out the radical hospitality and love of Christ. So if that's the case, how do we end up in this situation where a woman is begging for mercy from Jesus and he ignores her? I mean, it starts out okay. Perhaps in an effort to illustrate his point to the religious leaders, Jesus and the disciples go to Tyre and Sidon. This is Gentile territory. 
The inclusion of these foreign cities is meant to represent the world outside of Judaism. A foreign woman approaches Jesus seeking help. And annoyed by her persistent pleas, the disciples demonstrate their own biases, asking that Jesus send this annoying woman away. Then Jesus proceeds to act just like the religious leaders he's chastised earlier, drawing a line between who's in and who's out, who's acceptable and who's not. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We're told she is a Canaanite woman, a clear indication that she is not in and she's not acceptable. Yet she knows something about the practices of the Jewish people. She employs an ancient phrase for beseeching the help of God. Have mercy on me, Lord. And clearly, she has some understanding of who Jesus is, son of David, an idea drawn from the prophets in the Hebrew scripture. We too are familiar with these concepts. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, are some of the most ancient words that have survived from the earliest church liturgies. These Latin phrases mean, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. When I was a social worker, one of the things that I was asked to do was provide staff training at Badlands Ministries, one of the four ELCA outdoor ministry sites in our synod. The topic, child abuse and neglect. It's a pretty intense topic. And it is incredibly important for Bible camp staff to be aware of the process for reporting suspected child abuse or neglect because kids will share information in a setting where they feel comfortable and safe. It's also super important for these young adults to be aware of appropriate boundaries with campers as well. But presentations focusing on laws and regulations and century code can be really boring. So to demonstrate some of the ideas, I would have the staff members come up with skits about what not to do. In this scenario with the unnamed Canaanite woman, I think Jesus is providing a what not to do example for his disciples. We are uncomfortable with this encounter because it is precisely so on Jesus like. But ultimately, Jesus hears the woman, even though we have to get past J Jesus basically referring to this woman as a dog. Yet, Jesus does not reserve mercy. He does indeed heal the woman's daughter. And he publicly commends her for her faith, for her pursuit of justice on behalf of her child. The limits and constraints on God's grace and mercy are human-made constructs. We heard as much in our opening hymn, but there's a wideness in God's mercy. And we're the ones that put limits on it. In our reading from Isaiah, we hear that not only is God gathering the outcast of Israel, those who've been scattered, exiled and scattered, but others as well. The psalmist calls upon God's mercy and equity for all the nations of the earth. And Paul reminds us that despite our human pr propensity for disobedience, God is merciful to all. In a world riven by division, I think it's critical that we heed Jesus' reminder that our rituals and our traditions, be they religious or cultural, are not what matters. What matters as faithful disciples of Christ is our words and our actions. As I prepared for worship today, 
I was introduced to a song by The Many, which is an intentionally diverse worship band that incorporates a variety of musical styles into their own unique blend. With words written by Lenora Rand and music by Gary Rand, lovely, needy people is a lament for all of us. It echoes the words of the Canaanite woman, Lord, have mercy. And it reconnects us, lovely, broken, needy people, with those ancient words and reminds us that there is mercy enough, grace enough, love enough for all of us.
stand as you are able. We'll confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born as a Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. This is our offering moment. And since we don't cast our offering plates, we leave those at our entrance for you to um, leave your gifts as you come or go. Um, we'll take this time to reflect upon all of the things that God provides for us and what we offer back in a grateful response. For those of you joining us online, we give thanks for your continued support of our ministry, whether you are mailing in your giving or um, have ventured into the online giving um, that is linked to our Facebook page at Tide Give. Let's pray together the offering prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I take some time now and... Um, Greet one another verbally or with a nod of the head um, with a sign of Christ's peace. For those of you at home, <laughs> share your peace with one another. If you are joining us online um, by yourself, just send a text out to somebody. concerning the many houses of prayer 
and for guidance where religion serves as an arm of the government. Direct all people of faith, gracious God. Lord, have mercy. We pray for schools around the globe, for educators who must plan for the fall and for children without the resources to access remote learning. Guide us, compassionate God. Lord, have mercy. We pray for ourselves, for whenever we feel tormented by demons, and for all our family and our friends. Loving God, Lord, have mercy. We mourn the deaths of those we love, and we praise you for the lives of all your faithful people. At the end, gather us all into the joy of your presence. Grant us salvation, eternal God. Lord, have mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit, let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Our sending song for this Sunday is Build Us Up, Lord. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.